Disney films are a staple on all of our childhoods. We grow up watching them, and even as adults, we still love them, which is why most of us continue watching the Disney films to this day. And why wouldn't we? They're well-made films, and they're very entertaining. And because of this, most of us are very familiar with Disney characters, all of which makes them the perfect group to do a Lantern Corps video on. So we're going to look at five Disney characters and decide which Lantern Corps best suits them. Jafar. Now, there are three clear contenders for Jafar's Lantern Corps, the first of which is Rage. But let's face it, although Jafar does get angry from time to time, it's not really his core motivation. And even though the Red Lantern Corps is also all about revenge, and Jafar certainly did want revenge against Aladdin in the sequels, still, his rage and desire for vengeance is not enough for him to be a Red Lantern. Not when there are two much better options available. Now, Jafar has been voted the scariest Disney villain of all of the Disney villains on several occasions. And he is a very scary guy, to be fair. I mean, he's a ruthless, intelligent, and powerful man who will stop at nothing to achieve his goals. And he can also turn into a giant snake, which personally I found both very cool and quite scary as a kid. And he clearly does inspire a lot of fear in a lot of people, and it's very justified. So the Fear Lantern Corps works perfectly for him. And it was actually my first choice for which Lantern Corps he belongs in, because he 100% qualifies. But as I looked at the character more, I realised it actually isn't the right Lantern Corps for him. No, the right Lantern Corps for Jafar is the Orange Ring of Avarice. After all, Jafar was already a rich and powerful man, second only to the Sultan. But still, he wanted more. He wanted to be the Sultan. And then when he became Sultan, he had to become the most powerful sorcerer in the world. And ultimately, the way that Aladdin actually defeated him was to simply say that one person had more power than him, the genie. And so Jafar had to become more powerful and be an all-powerful genie. And it was never actually about being powerful. It was about being the most powerful. He had to have more than everyone else. It didn't actually matter how much he had, just so long as it was more than anyone else had. And that is the very definition of avarice. So, he could easily be in fear or avarice, both make perfect sense. But like I said, greed is his main motivation. His lust for power is what has clearly led him his entire life. And as soon as he realised that someone was more powerful than him, he immediately wished for more power, as his greed wouldn't allow him to be second best. So, for me, he has to be an orange lantern. But of course, if you still want him to be a fear lantern, well, that does work perfectly too. But I think avarice makes more sense for him. Elsa. Now, as we all know, Elsa had magical powers, and she lived with this curse, or blessing, all of her life. From the moment her powers manifested themselves, she had to learn control. And when she lost that control, only for a second, her sister became seriously injured, and Anna could have died. Now, of course, she was ultimately fine, but still, Elsa was terrified of her powers, and did everything she could to keep them in line. She hid her powers from everyone, she hid herself from everyone, and sacrificed everything in the process. She alienated herself from her sister, she pulled back from the entire kingdom, and even when her parents died and she was at her lowest point, she still remained locked away, because she knew that the stress and grief that she was feeling in that moment meant that she was completely unable to control her abilities. My point being that she has an incredible willpower, there are not many people who'd be able to keep up this level of dedication throughout their entire life. And though Elsa did eventually discover that she'd been going about it all wrong, and that fear wasn't the answer to controlling her powers, still, she did demonstrate an immense level of willpower. Now, it is control that ultimately, when she learns how to control her powers, it came down to the fact that she had to embrace love. And it was her love for her sister and her people that allowed Elsa to finally get control of her powers. But personally, I don't actually think this is enough for her to be in the Love Lantern Corps. It could definitely be considered a big act of love, and some people could think that she belongs in the Love Corps. But when she has spent so much more of her life with extreme willpower and dedication, I think being in the Emerald Lantern Corps would make more sense. After all, this love was really just a one-off. It wasn't the crazy extreme level of love that the Star Sapphires normally have. And even the actual event of her controlling her powers was actually just her overcoming her fear of her own abilities. And having the ability to overcome great fear is what qualifies you to be a Green Lantern. That is literally what they look for in Green Lanterns, people who can overcome great fear. So I think the Lantern Corps of Willpower makes the most sense for her. Ariel. 
Ariel's entire story, and her entire life, was about her fascination with the surface world. She spent all her time obsessing over it and collecting a treasure trove of surface world artifacts. And this love of the surface world eventually culminated with her falling in love with a man from the surface, Prince Eric. This was a man that she loved so much she gave up her voice, and she also gave up her life under the sea, her life as a princess, at least an under the sea princess, and she gave up her friends and her family. She was prepared to sacrifice everything to be with a man on the surface and to live on the surface world as a normal human. Basically, she is a textbook example of someone who belongs in the Love Lantern Corps, because that is all Ariel is, love. She loves her friends, she loves her family, she loves land, and she loves Prince Eric. It's without her doubt her strongest emotion, and I think you'll agree that she belongs in the Sapphire Lantern Corps of love. There is just no other choice for her, because this is all that Ariel is, love. She doesn't really display many other emotions throughout the film. Sure, there's some anger at points and a little sadness. I mean, maybe an argument could be made that she should be in the Hope Lantern Corps, as she was hoping of living on the surface. But really, that's still a part of her love of the surface world, and it doesn't really make sense. So she has to be a love lantern, because it's just the only core for her. Hercules Now, Hercules began his life as a god, but Hades had him transformed into a mortal. A mortal with super strength, yes, but still a mortal. And the problem is, because of his super strength, he never really fit in with other mortals. But because he was no longer a god, he couldn't live with the all-powerful gods so he was kind of stuck in the middle. And he didn't fit in so much that his parents had to tell him where he came from and how they found him. And as soon as he knows this, he desperately goes searching for answers about who he is, where he comes from, and why he's so powerful when no other mortals have his amazing strength. Of course, he then finds out his father is Zeus and that in order to become a god again and return to Olympus, he has to become a true hero. So he does. He works hard and trains until he is ready to be a hero. He then goes out to prove himself and does his labours that prove that he deserves to be a god. And throughout all of this, he never once gives up hope, never loses focus, he continually works on his goal because he is filled with hope. Hope that he can be better than he is and that he can return to Olympus and be a god again. But not only does he have great hope, but he actually inspires it as well. His deeds as a hero make him famous across Greece and the world and he brings hope to all of them. Hope that life will get better and that they will be safe in their homes. Before he turned up, everyone was scared and wanted to leave because of all the monsters and desperate depression around them. But he cleared all that up and gave everyone hope. So simply put, he belongs in the Hope Lantern Corps because that is what he's all about. True, he did have his doubts at some points, but still, he didn't give up. He got over it and he got back on being a hero and even ended up saving the entire universe and saving the woman he loved and in doing so, he achieved his dream and became a god. He may have chosen to remain immortal, but still, he did achieve his dream. Now, you could argue that this is actually willpower, and you wouldn't be completely wrong. I mean, it took an amazing amount of willpower to make this happen. But personally, I think hope makes more sense, because it's not just the hope he has inside of him, but the hope he inspires in others. Although I do have to say that since he has divine blood and is potentially going to be immortal one day, he could definitely qualify for the life Lantern Corps, because it kind of makes sense for gods to be in that core. But since he's still such an institution of hope, I would still say that the best lantern core for him is without a doubt the Blue Lanterns of Hope. Simba Now, before I start on this lantern core, I do want to say that the fact that he is a lion doesn't actually mean he can't have a power ring. He is sentient, and there are actually other sentient animals who have power rings. So the fact that he's a lion, not really an issue. Now, Simba's first real emotion that we see would probably best be described as greed. He wants to be king. That is, of course, until he realises that him becoming king means that his father has to die. And he actually has deep regrets about this and is very sad about the whole thing. So, Avarice is not his lantern core. And after Scar manipulates him into thinking he got the king killed, he runs away and lives in exile. And in this time, he doesn't really display any strong emotions either. He basically just chills for a few years. And even when he learns of the problems with his kingdom, he still doesn't return home, because he is afraid of dealing with the consequences of his return. So the Lantern of Shame does kind of make sense for him, as he is ashamed of pretty much everything he has done up to this point. And if we were going to put him in a Lantern Corps at this moment in his life, it would make sense to be shame. But Simba's story doesn't end here, and everything changes when he talks to his father's spirit, 
and manages to work up the courage to return home and do what needs to be done. Put simply, he overcame his greatest fear, which is a key requirement to being a Green Lantern. And when he does come home, he leads a revolution and faces the consequences of his part in his father's death, and even defeats his uncle in battle. And in doing so, he discovers that he actually had nothing to do with Mufasa's death, and he then unites his people and restores his kingdom, once again making it prosperous. And doing all of that took a lot of willpower, and I do mean a lot. Just uniting a kingdom is a difficult task, but facing his greatest fear and returning home? Well, that proves without a shadow of a doubt that he is qualified to be an Emerald Knight. Just overcoming this fear is a great challenge, but then he rebuilds the entire kingdom on top of this. I mean, that is not an easy task. And though a lot of what he does is done out of love, love for his people, his kingdom, and love for Nala, still, it's the will it took that is the stronger emotion. So even though he did run away and give in to his fears, what matters is that eventually he was able to overcome those fears. So I think Simba would have to be a Green Lantern, because there isn't any other clear choice for him. It does make the most sense for him to be an Emerald Knight. And that is five Disney characters and their Lantern Corps that they belong in. Do you agree with my choices? Or would you have put these characters in different Lantern Corps altogether? Be sure to let us know in the comments along with any other characters that you'd like me to do a Lantern Corps video on in the future. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.